All right, look, you've tried everything to get your arms to grow, but it's just not working. We got something for you. We're going to talk about three things you could do that will get your arms bigger in 30 days. It's going to work. You guys want to guess Ooh. what they are? Uh, are we going to do lifting are weights? Exercise <laughs> variables or other other variables? Uh, other variables. There's some okay. exercise stuff in there as well. But these are things that I think, uh, and I know I'm pretty sure you guys agree with me, that if the average person who trains implemented, they would notice a significant difference in their armor size. Probably about a quarter of an inch in 30 days, maybe even more for some people. So I would guess the first one has to be something related to the frequency. Yeah. How often mm -hmm. you're you're doing it. Yeah. So so this is a this one's huge. Um, and this one, whenever when I would apply this to myself and to my clients, regardless of the body part, they would always see some some kind of result. So essentially this is what it what it is, right? So take your total sets per week that you do for your arms and do them over three or four workouts. In other words, rather than doing them all in one workout or two workouts, split them up so that you're training more frequently or train the body parts more frequently, but the total set volume is exactly the same. Now this doesn't, this doesn't mean the total volume is the same. So here's where it gets kind of weird, right? If you did, let's say nine sets mm. for your biceps on Monday, you're significantly weaker by you know halfway through the workout. Yeah. By the time you're done with set number five, you're not lifting as much weight for set six, seven, eight, yeah, you're and still nine. overdoing it. But if you did nine sets over three workouts, three sets on Monday, three sets on Wednesday, three sets on Friday, even if the exercises were the same, although I'll, I'll make a different argument there, but even if the exercises were the same, you're probably going to be a little stronger. So what you've done essentially is slowly, gradually, very easily added volume yep. to your training uh, without adding sets, without even adding exercises. So people do that. They just get more growth. Now, the other part of it is when you're only doing three sets for biceps, you tend to do the most effective exercises. So you tend to avoid all the stuff that you do towards the end of your workout. So it's just more effective. Yeah. Uh, That's a common that pitfall though, yeah. too, where most people just add it into their current workout routine and thinking that like, you know, just adding more exercise based on arms is going to move the needle when right. it's just too much volume. So uh, I'm, Obviously, I'm back to training consistently right now. So I was actually thinking about this the other day about how we we program and we split things up like this uh, over the course of three days, um, hitting a muscle group like this versus hammering it one day. And obviously, the frequency. One of the things too, I think it's important to address uh, the the spike that you get. Uh, yeah, muscle protein synthesis spike that comes from a workout lasts about 24 to 48, maybe maybe 72 hours. And then it starts to drop off and then go back. And it looks down like a bell curve, right? Yeah. So it's like you you hit that hard exercise, shoo, it shoots yep. up. Yep. And then it probably peaks around 24 hours yep. or so. Yep. And then it starts to work its way back down. Right. And then by 72 hours, it's all the way back down. Right. That's right. And so by basically doing it three times a week, virtually every other day, you're pretty much right as that's starting to come back down, you're hitting again. You're keeping that positive protein synthesis signal um, is is what you're doing there. And that, now the harder the workout, the 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 bigger the stimulus tends to be, but there's a there's um, at some point you start to get negative results because of the, the the ability to recover or adapt. So people will make the argument and say, well, you could do a greater protein synthesis signal with a harder workout. And that's to a certain point. And what ends up happening now is your recovery takes precedent. And so your muscle building signal drops, but you're still recovering. People think because you're recovering, you're growing. You're not. Adaptation recovery, although there's some crossover, are not the same thing. So once a week means you get the spike, then it comes down, then it probably goes below baseline for a few days. So, okay, mm -hmm. that was that was my next question to setting this up was that, you know, paying attention to how sore I am. And th that would be the argument I think someone would make. It'd be like, oh, well, I'll just train harder. Problem with that is like when you hammer uh, – any muscle group for that matter, but we're talking about arms arms right now. And you're sore for five, six days later, yeah. like sort of the touch still. Like at what point is there diminishing return on how hard That's you right. train? Mm -hmm. And so breaking it up with the same amount of sets just over three days, not only I think gives you a, a better workout for each one of them, meaning that you, you're able to lift more uh, weight and that, so that uh, progressively overloads it. But then also doesn't, uh, go too beyond and make you so sore that your body's just trying to yeah. recover. So I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, no matter how you draw it up, I, I don't see, I guess the only place it makes sense is, uh, the pro bodybuilder who's on so much anabolic steroids and steroids for recovery and things that 
basically allow them to get away with that consistent overreaching where the average person, this becomes it's paramount. Not, it's not just that. When you're when these guys take these anabolic hormones, they have a very loud anabolic uh, chemical signal, hormone signal. On top of that, they have incredible genetics. So the, when you look at these, these top-level bodybuilders, um, their protein synthesis is positive for longer than the average person. So when I work out or somebody else works out, average person, it might spike 24 hours, start to drop about 40, 48 hours, 72 like hours. They're like this, right? Theirs stays up longer. They're just, they're just, they just build muscle easier. So it's got those genetics. Then you add anabolics on top of it. Well, yeah, you can hammer a body part once a week and not really worry about it. This is why, in, in my experience, training natural people, full body three-day week routines were superior to body part splits where they're doing one body part a day. You know, the, the total set volume being equated roughly the same. They just did much better. There's more There's more reasons that we can make the, this point with, but I think for arms in particular, like if you're working your, arm, your biceps and triceps once a week, you're doing 12 sets for biceps, 12 sets for triceps, divide it up over three workouts. Like mm -hmm. watch what happened. That alone, most yeah. people will see gains just from doing that alone. Yeah, and then I thought you were going to bring up first thing, the compound lifts uh, yeah. being the biggest mover of the needle. It's just like anything else we've found with muscle groups. It's like if we can get the loudest signal possible, you know, you're going to have the 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 most return for that. Yeah, for some reason, in triceps, this is somewhat accepted, right? Like people will say, oh, the best muscle builder for triceps, and people will name some compound exercises like dips or close grip bench press. But biceps, nobody considers compound lift, even though it's like, why? It's on your arm too. It flexes the elbow. Right. Like try doing curl grip pull-ups where you're using the biceps as much as you can, right? Where you're kind of rounding forward using the biceps. That is a mass building bicep exercise that people just, they think your chin-up is just the back exercise. You can do it in a way to where it's a lot of bicep um, and it will put more tension and activate more muscle fibers in the biceps because it's activating more more muscle groups uh, in general. Why do you think that is? I, I actually never thought about what you just said. Um, we have, it's it's pretty widely accepted if you ask most people, hey, what's the best mass builder for your triceps? They're going to respond with one of those two yeah. answers. Close grip, bench press, or dips yep. is is widely accepted as the best yeah. you know, arm builder yeah, or tricep builder. For some builder. reason, bicep. But why, yeah. why nobody says that for biceps? That's it's just, it. I've I, never thought about that. I think for triceps, people experimented with technique to make it hit the triceps more, so you get close grip versus traditional. I think with a chin-up, it was always a back exercise, and no, nobody ever taught it in a way to where, because you could do it and hit more back, right? You could lead with your chest, chest high, lean back, squeeze the lats. Or you ever watch an arm wrestler do a chin up? Arm wrestlers do this. They'll they'll curl their forearm and their biceps and they pull with kind of this rounded shoulder because they're trying to get their arms real strong. That's a bicep chin up. You still use some back, yeah. but yeah. try what I'm saying and see how you feel it uh, in your biceps. I mean, you'll do four reps and they'll light your biceps yeah, up. Yeah, that like recruitment sequence is heavily... Uh, focused on your biceps doing carrying the load. Yes, a great way to regress that to teach that too is to just do it on a lat pull down yes. with lighter weight, so they can get the understanding the technique yeah. of the yep. kind of rounding for because it, it, it goes against everything we teach for pull ups. I it, know. it looks like a terrible pull down or a terrible pull up. Yes, yes. Yeah. and Unless so you know with bad doing. form, but yeah, it's it's, so that's why it's important to explain that right. There's a, there <laughs> if you go into it and you do a lat pull down like you're taught to do a lat pull down, uh, you're not going to get the same effect mm -hmm. from it as if you do this different. So I would teach it sitting down in a lat pull down uh, where I, I can teach the posture, the form in order to work the biceps and then progress them to a body weight. Because a lot yes. of people want, might not even be able to do that. You have to have, you got to be pretty strong to pull your body weight Most A lot of people can't even do a, a traditional um, you know, chin up. It's hard, um, let alone one that emphasizes the arms. You know, It makes it really difficult. But like I said, if you watch arm wrestlers do chin ups, and some of them will do it with one arm, you see it's like an arm chin up and it's a crazy bicep I, and I love I it too because it you're uh you put it in a stretch position that you just don't normally do you don't rarely you there's very few exercises outside of that in the gym where you're, you're real gonna, crazy full extension yeah where you're going to be in a full extension like that it's and, not just that the tension is high throughout the whole rep yeah the tension's high up at the top in the middle all the way yeah. down like it is it is you can't full. hide from it yeah there's no like gravity when, with a barbell curl you know the tension's kind of mid rep um, the bottom part of the rep isn't as heavy because you're not directly pushing gravity. And, and at the top, same thing. You're doing a, a curl grip chin up. I mean, it is the whole way it's hard. So it's a gnarly bicep compound lift. And then dips for triceps or close grip uh, bench press. Like Especially if you train, like we said, where you're doing the body parts three days a week. Well, now you can do these compound lifts more often. Whereas you do it all in one workout. You're not doing a bunch of compound lifts 
for nine sets. You're doing maybe one, and then the rest are all these isolation. Okay. All right, exercise. let's hear the third one. What's the third one? Occlusion training. Um, yeah, occlusion okay. training. So it's a really nifty little trick to add size to a body part. This is a pretty crazy, I mean, it really does work. Um, and if you added, let's say, a couple sets per week uh, to your workout with just occlusion, the you'll see noticeable size on this. I experimented. I know you did. Oh, yeah. I mean, it legit works. I remember when we first heard about it. It was like we 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 dove all into it to see if it was legit or not. And it's just like one of those things. Not a lot of people talk about it because it's. I mean, it's kind of uh, it's unique and it has you know it has its place in terms, especially with rehab. Totally. But like for muscle building, it's a valid way to to train. Now explain to like okay, so it's basically you are getting the benefits of the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, right? That's what's happening. Is you're you because there's there's that's one of the signals for growth is that you are volumizing cell, is, you, cell swelling is swelling up yeah. right and then it's volumizing it's getting bigger so that you can do that again and that's probably the most extreme version of that. that's part of it the other part of it is you're essentially starving the muscle of um the the, the nutrients it needs to continue to perform and so what it does is it recruits more and more of these fast switch uh. muscle fibers so you get this crazy recruitment of muscle fibers with very lightweight. So for people that know, yep. if I were to do this on my arms, I would take knee wraps and I'd wrap them around the top of my arm tight enough to where I could feel yeah. like 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 it's occluding, like it's it's preventing, you know, blood flow from coming out of the bicep. Now you don't want to be so tight that your arms go numb, right. but it's relatively tight. Then you go and you grab some dumbbells and you do some curls. And what you'll find is you'll do some curls, you put the dumbbells down, wait 30 seconds, try it again. And it just burns like, nothing burns like it occlusion hurts. training. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy fire. It's a, it's a burn. And the pump is so intense, it's crazy. Like, you'll never experience a pump in your arms like you will with it. Because it literally is trapping the blood in the bicep. Um, but a few sets of this, and light dumbbells, by the yeah. way. If you curl 30-pound oh, dumbbells, you do this with 10. That's the benefit, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to load barely anything, and you're going to get a great uh, workout from that. Well, this is the, this is the uh, you know, origin of this, right? I believe it was hockey players. I want to say was the first uh, pro athletes that they were they were utilizing this for. It for, was for rehab. By, yeah, there was a Japanese. Uh, I think it was a scientist who noticed that when he would kneel, often his calves would get really pumped, and they seemed to grow. So he started doing some studies on this, and it's an old. I mean, this the this originated, I think, in the seventies. Maybe Doug could look it up. Um, and so that's where the initial science came from. And then they found value with rehab because you know, if you have a hurt knee and I want to build my quad muscles, I can't use much resistance. Yeah. But if I clued my leg, yeah. I don't need much resistance to cause a similar uh, muscle Any growth. limited range of motion. Even. 1966, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. Dr. Yoshiaki Sato. Now, does, does it say what he originally, because I thought I thought it was, I thought I read that it was hockey players at first were the ones, to, maybe the first ones to adopt it yeah. after he did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, once once I learned about it, what a great, it was such a great tool for trainers to use. And understand. Oh yeah, for real. What yeah. what I did, so I went down the rabbit hole once I experimented with it. Absolutely loved it. In fact, you could go back on Mind Pump TV and you could see a video of Sal and I when we were fifteen <laughs> putting a video together. You look that, like, yeah, dude. That's right. <laughs> so, Just young skin. So you could see a video of us actually teaching this way <laughs> way back way yeah, back yes. when. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I, but so I, I mean, I almost became obsessed with it. I was doing it all the time. I was, I was trying different body parts. I was in, uh, where I saw negative returns on it when I started to completely replace some of my traditional no, strength no, training. No, no. You do it as a little addition. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, it's even it's a, even a decent uh, temporary supplementation. I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even like uh, if you're in a hotel room, you just have bands. Yeah, or yeah. Yeah, let's say it's a week. I'm out of town or mm -hmm. something like that, and I don't have a bunch of weights, something like that. Like including your arms, your calves, your legs, and doing a little. In fact, what a great way to you know get a quick five minute workout why you're traveling and it's enough of a signal that it's going to keep you from for sure losing you may not make huge gains on it but it's gonna it's gonna keep yeah it. so if you did the three steps right you tripled the frequency same sets you're doing now but triple the frequency you added a compound lift each workout and you did maybe one set of occlusion for biceps and triceps on one of those days or two sets you're going to get bigger. You'll have bigger arms by the end. And as long as you feed yourself, of course. Oh, yeah. Using a calorie deficit, it's not going to yeah. work very well. You need to well. build materials. Yeah. Dude, I got to tell you guys, I had um, 
we had some friends from church over uh, yesterday, and they all have little kids, but they're little girls. So it's a bunch. We had, yeah, my son, who's you know almost four, and then you had uh, three, four, five little girls ranging between one to like maybe five or four and a half, five years old. Just, just a bunch of kids, right? And but the parents are there, and we're having a good time hanging out. And at some point, I'm looking at, I'm looking around, like it's quiet. <laughs> What's going on now? When you have kids and yeah. it's quiet, it it's usually scary. means you get <laughs> worried immediately. So I go and look, and I find them. They're in the courtyard, and they're just organized. They're playing peacefully, oh, cooperating. <laughs> and I'm like, oh wow, this is like, way different huh? than when my brother brings his sons over. You know, what I mean? it's like turmoil and tornado. So it really does good yeah. with the girls. So if they're like a, a milder manner, he he comes down to them. Yeah, level. oh that's good. But little girls are so. I mean, and you could you should see them like organizing. Okay, you do this. Oh. I'll do that. You grab this. You put this over there. I'm like this is very, like when my cousin and my brother brings their their boys over. Like we can't take our eyes off them for ten seconds. Just chaos. Or it's going to be yeah. war. Yes, or something. <laughs> Someone's going to break an arm or something. Courtney and I were tripping because uh, we were at jujitsu watching Everett do his thing, and and this lady brought a little girl in, and she was like, you know, like four or something, or maybe five, but was just sitting there. And uh, entertaining herself, playing with these little blocks. And then her mom's like, you know, I have to step out for this phone call. Can you make sure, you know, she's like, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, no problem. And she steps out and, and the little girl just keeps playing and all this kind of gets up, looks around, sits back down, does it. I'm like, no way. Yeah, like, no, <laughs> like, she's just totally self-sufficient. I'm like, I've never seen this. <laughs> That's like, girls are so different. Yeah. 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 Max uh, can be like that. Max, oh, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Max is so chill like that. He, he's sick right now. He threw up last night. Oh, no. It, like, I tell you guys, it's so, it's so funny when he when he does that because he's like, he's been does he have so, a fever or just stomach virus? Uh, he had a small one. He had 99. So oh, it's, just not, it's not a bad. Normally when it starts hitting over 100, yeah. we start to get a little worried. Like, it's going to be bad. It's been, you know, these I kids. a like, bug that sucks. Yeah, you know how it is. School's yep. back and going. Yep. And so it's like they catch something like every freaking week. It feels Dude, when like. kids get a like a fever of 100, 101, you can't even tell half the time. Yeah, you know, I get a hundred one fever. I'm dead. Oh, I, know. I gotta tell yeah. him to calm down. I'm like, dude, you're sick right now. He's still wanting to play and wrestle yeah. and do stuff. I'm like, Max, you gotta calm down, buddy. So, yeah. yeah. What's the highest fever? You guys remember the highest fever you ever had as a kid? Did your mom ever tell you stories? Mm. Well, I don't know. That's a good question. I, don't know. I had to take like a one of those like cold baths. So did I. Yeah, they, they actually put me in an ice bath. Yeah, yeah. Did my, that to you too. Yeah, uh -huh. my family's done that before. I think I was hundred and five or something crazy, like some ridiculous number. And oh, they, yeah. The doctor's like, yeah, put him in a bath yeah, with ice yeah, right now. That's not good. Because he's going <laughs> to melt his brain. As an adult, <laughs> that's when, what I think. when I was in Thailand with uh, food poisoning, I got up to 104 as an adult. Ugh. Now that, yeah. I was well, hallucinating. Adult, you feel that. No, no, no I was hallucinating. Oh, yeah. I was God. in bed. I, it was crazy. I was in bed, and I, and it looked like there were like Bro, spiders how, what a the horrible walls. experience Ugh. when you're traveling, too. That has to be like one of the worst places to ever get It was sick. a nightmare. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was so terrible. Because remember, I, I was getting, remember the whole story. I got cocky because I went with Jessica so when we first started dating. So she got me to do all kinds of crazy shit. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're like, we're in Bangkok, right? And I'm eating street food. And uh, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to be courageous. That's you know? all you got to say. Listen, right I didn't there, get I'm sick like, from it. So I got what? cocky. No, Bangkok, street food, totally fine. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, pff, you know, I, I, I don't need to worry about anything. We go to the resort in Thailand. And it was a nice resort too. Nice resort. They served me a drink, but it had a sliced banana and the skin uh, of the banana was in the drink. That's why I figured got it. Oh I got my it. God, that's so weird. Drank the drink, went to bed. And a few hours later, it was like, oh no, this is good. She had to, remember I told you guys, she had to get out. She had to leave the hotel room, hitch a ride to find like a doctor that would come to the room. To get yeah. To get sure. It wasn't the monkey feeding you like pieces. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't pay for that. Justin. <laughs> Hey, so uh, you got to tell the, the you have to tell the audience that you've got these uh, goggles on right now. That <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. I ran my and, buddy Holly's. Dude. I bought a pair right away because I can't wait to play with them. Yeah, they got cameras in them, so I'm just kind of playing around. I actually got these because I'm going to this crazy metal festival, and I'm like, I don't want to be the guy that goes to the concert that's like, because like all my favorite bands are going to be there, and I'm like, I just want to like not be an asshole about it and capture like good songs or like be in the mosh pit and like not have to like, you know, be the influencer guy. You know, so, so it records. Is, yeah, it records like, and then I just, I'm wearing them just to kind of get used to them. And uh, I am liking them more and more where I'm, like, just because of all the features I didn't realize, like I can listen to music. I was like washing dishes and like loud and nobody could hear that i'm listening to music wait it plays mu how, how through your skull yeah it, exactly yeah. yeah it goes through like your 
I don't, I don't really know what that uh, bone is called, but <laughs> yeah, through that like. Wait a minute, it plays music. Process. You record, and yeah. then what else? Probably take phone calls. Takes phone calls. Oh, you can actually take calls from it too. Yeah, and you can you can set it up with uh, the Meta um, AI, so you could you can, I could actually like say, hey, what am I looking at right now? And so I could actually uh, hold something like say it's I don't know whatever some like exotic fruit, and it could tell me exactly what it is. And it's weird. It, I haven't really played around with that that much yet. Because so if you look at one out. of us and you say that, we'll yeah. say what it is. What will say? Uh, mildly influential fitness people <laughs> I think they're cool mildly. I don't know real mild real mild, real mild. Eth ethnic man pretty, uh, pretty decent like YouTube uh, famous uh, guys uh, dude I'm so that's so weird I'm so failing at the influencer thing dude I can't tell you how much I can't you guys really fucking owe me after this one that's why, all why, I, have to say. I just it's <laughs> I hate it. You I just, jumped right in. I just can't stand it, dude. It's just yeah. not... Uh, and, and I get that there's uh, a whole bunch of people that um, they make a living doing this, and they love they love to do it's that. A, it's, a, it's an all-day thing. Yes. Every day. All, constantly. And I continually fall short. Like, I just, ah, oh, forgot to record that meal. Ah, <sighs> oh, forgot yeah. to tell... You know what I'm saying? It's just... And uh, my mind is completely focused on that right now. I'm, like, really trying That's to make a conscious effort to loop the youtube audience in with the instagram and so that at all times you know what i'm eating what i'm doing training wise so people can follow the whole process and it's just a lot it's think, just think about the mindset that someone has who likes doing that you want the attention validation you yeah, yeah. you I love think it's constant you validation love, constant you, you love and yeah, are addicted never to the that, no. because you don't need constant validation like yeah. imagine somebody well, not, not you guys either but it's the thing about somebody who's like okay like uh I can't be with myself. I need to see, I need people to like everything I'm doing all the time. That's constant validation. Yeah. That's why, that's the only reason Exhausting. why you would like it. Yeah. I, I don't see other, any other reason. Yeah. I mean, the other part would be the people that justify it by, because they make a living through just that. There's you know? so many other uh -huh. ways to make a living. Like, look at no, you right now. Are you, uh, you going to keep doing this, Adam? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's the part that, I mean. <laughs> Counting the days, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, no, totally. And I think that that's the part that I do uh, for our audience that are, because I'm getting lots of positive feedback, right? A lot of people is, oh my God, this is the content we've been waiting for i said well enjoy why it lasts because i'm fucking out of here in <laughs> two months so just so you know it's not this Eat is not up. not yeah. gonna be a thing i'm doing all the time you know it's just not i don't know it's it's not sustainable i don't think it's healthy uh i i think it's i think it's great it's valuable i think our audience that is paying attention i think uh the the feedback i'm getting is uh they really really enjoy and i wasn't sure if um i wasn't sure if it was going to create enough good organic content i'm not man i'm only doing like maps 15 two exercises oh, it's like this is yeah but you, you you go through you're a trainer and you're a coach yeah. so you understand how to your explain. explanations of everything yeah. i think it's that's what people don't get enough of in their yeah. opinion right it's like you're, you're really thoroughly explaining your, your rationale and your reasoning behind that's right. it. yeah and, and I, D, dylan's idea of the way doing this kind of like i don't know what do you call that is that third person where it's like i'm talking uh like i'm not i'm not talking uh, of my i'm like ha, like you're peering into my thoughts almost right, right. Got it. So, what would that be considered? What person? What, what, what version wall? is that? I don't know. Yeah, breaking the fourth yeah. wall. Is that I what that would be considered? So, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like that perspective, right? Where it's like I'm not really uh, communicating, which I really enjoy. That though is like the stuff that we've done in the past, where we shoot like a YouTube video, where it's like, okay, teach this, you know, teach yeah, the occlusion yeah, yeah. or two, and then we have to like talk to the camera, pretend like there's a million yeah. people. I don't do so well this. Where this. Uh, the guys are just kind of floating around doing their own thing and I'm really actually being hyper present into the workout oh, okay. and I'm just, I'm actually just expressing my thoughts as I'm like, Oh, I need to do this. And like, and so I'm not even ever really addressing the camera. Got it. I'm just yeah. talking just like inner dialogue that's coming. Yeah. Out. And so, uh, that part, I actually, I don't mind that. And it's not as torturous to me as, the regular YouTube videos where we are. It doesn't feel fake maybe or yeah. as fake. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It doesn't feel fake at all. It, yeah. it literally feels like, you know, I just tell Dylan like, Hey, I'm going to work out in about 15 minutes. They go get all set up. And then he put clips to mic on. I forget about it, that it's even oh, there. there. And then I just, I go through my thought mm -hmm. and, and I'm, and I, I don't really prep a lot of what I'm going to do. I kind of on the fly decide like, what am I going to do today? How do I mm -hmm. feel? What do I need to do? How's everything going? Like, Oh, what's the program call for? Oh, I'm going to modify this. And so it's, it's, how's, how's the result so far? You're, what, what week are we in? Well, this is going to be the fourth week. Oh, you're in fourth week. So I'm, you look different. So I'm I looking can, at, I can see you look different. Um, I'm weighing in at 209 right now. It's 10 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's 10 pounds. Not trying to really 
put on aggressively. I've been just slowly kind of increasing the calories. I wonder and, when you get your, when are you mm. going to do your first body fat? So I'm, I just was right before we got on the podcast. I was looking to schedule the the thing. I'd like to get it done this coming week. How interesting would it be that you actually gain more lean body mass than that because you lost some fat? Yeah, it's going to be wild. So I, it's like I I hate to speculate. Yeah, because, I was going to say cause, because I know it's going to like. I, yeah, if wait. it doesn't come out, because here's what, I mean, I, I keep telling the, the audience that, you know, listen, uh, I don't care how long I've been doing this, how confident I feel, all these things like that. Uh, many times I go and I test and I realize, oh shit, I'm not on the, the perfect path. Mm -hmm. Like, I, obviously I'm making progress. Like, I, I don't think I'm going to go get it and it's going to be like, yeah. oh, you're fatter and you, you know, like. You lost muscle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think I lost muscle and put body fat on over the last, you know, month, but you know, it also can be very discouraging if I only lost a, a half a percent, you know, or quarter percent of body yeah. fat, and maybe I only put on one or two pounds. That could be really discouraging sure. with the amount of effort and work, but I don't I don't think so. But it could, what I'm really curious about, what, what it could do, because yeah. I've never come from this, uh, like, how do you say this? Like, well, you've never, you've never come into this with that much muscle memory. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because you've, you've done a transformation. But you didn't have, but you went beyond what you ever did before. Yes. Here, you're not even going to get to your, 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 in 90 days, you're not even going to hit what you did. Right. You're all, it's all muscle memory. Yes. At this point. So this is like, this is actually very new for okay, me. Okay. Well, here's something objective. How's your performance and strength? Oh, it goes up every lift, every lift. So you're noticing big changes. There. Yeah. But remember too, like, and this is what I try to communicate to the audience is that, man, I really, I mean, I, I started at 135 squats, yeah, yeah. 135 deadlifts, yeah. you know, dumbbell pressing 45 pound dumbbells. Like yeah. I really didn't need to do much at all. And each week I've just incrementally moved mm -hmm. up. The biggest thing that's frustrating and I can, because my, my physique is changing now and I can actually see visible change and like it's starting to come together. Uh, my chest is one of my, you know, it's a big muscle. And so to not be training it is oh, really the terror. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, like it didn't. Are it, you able to do anything? So, th so I'm gonna start today. I'm gonna do some band work. Oh yeah. So I completely took off all of last week. So I've had almost ten full days of nothing at all after the kind of scare. I've been hitting the BPC and the TB500 like crazy. The next thing is this week I'm gonna introduce bands. And right now Katrina's really working. So I've got this like ball. It just feels like a ball of tissue that moves around. And I know that's what's restricting me right now. Mm -hmm. And so I got to just get, she's, she was, she had the hot stones on me last night. if you tore night. your pec minor? Because hmm. you wouldn't see it that much if you tore pec minor. Hmm. You would see it when you flex. You might have a little divot coming in. Yeah, it is a little bit like a, like a little bit of a, a divot right there. So, hmm. and now it's like a, you know, like I said, like a, a ball of like scar tissue that I'm, I'm dealing with right now. torn pec minor. That'd be crazy. If so... You know, I, you know, it's so funny. Like people ask me like, oh, have you had to go? Like, I'm afraid to go to the doctor because I don't want to hear. Yeah, I don't want to hear what they have to say. <laughs> so oh gonna, I'm going to try and solve this yeah. myself first because <laughs> I don't want to be told that, dude. I don't want to, I don't want them to try and tell me like, oh, it's this. So that you, surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear that. Like I'm determined to, to work around it. I mean, the, the positive thing for the audience is that it's real shit, right? It's like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm not in the perfect scenario. It's so, you know, hey, people have to work with and around injuries a lot of times. I'm dealing with that right now. It's definitely uh, the the frustrating part is like, you know, being able to hit my chest is just it, with the amount of muscle I've lost is a huge dis Not being able to is a huge disadvantage. So, so you're doing BPC-157. You're doing thymus and beta for recovery. Are you supplementing with like magnesium at night to help with like the muscle recovery? So I'm almost, almost always, I mean... Um, Mellow is like a staple supplement. And yeah. that's and I guess I should probably cover some things. I keep forgetting to talk about. I don't count um like I've been telling the audience like if I'm doing any sort of peptides. I've I had a whole episode the other day where I broke down my hormone therapy and like so I'm I'm trying to be uh, as transparent about everything that I do as possible. I'm documenting all the food. Uh there's things like vitamin D, like magnesium, like the Mellow product. Like there's certain things that I just that's a You're, they're always in. Yeah, I need it. Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm deficient in magnesium. I'm deficient in vitamin D. So I don't count that as like a hey, I'm getting ready for this. Get, you, you know, along I, those lines, just a little teaching uh, opportunity for the audience. Uh, there's estimates, but probably about 60% of people are deficient in magnesium. And a lot of people don't know what the symptoms of magnesium deficiency are. Anxiety depression, and insomnia. Those are the most common wow. Those are the most common uh, side effects yeah. of a magnesium deficiency. So if you're like, 
why am I feeling anxious or why is it hard to sleep? Like what's going on? You might be one of the 40% that all you'd have to do is take a, a, a well-absorbable magnesium supplement. There's different versions. Mellow is the one that we work with from, from Ned. Supplement with that. And the good news is you'll know within, probably within the first time you take it, if, if it's anxiety oh, or I insomnia. Knew, I, knew yeah. it, I knew it right away. It was like it was like an obvious. That's why when people ask me like, oh, what do you think about this this product or that? I said, well, listen, with something like magnesium, if you're deficient in it and you take it, there's no yeah. question if it's working. Like it will- it you'll will, tell. You can yeah, tell. you'll be able to tell like instantly the first night you take it, you will get some of the best sleep you've ever had. And to me, that was, it's like, and it's a 50, 50 shot. There's, that's how many people are deficient in it that you, you could be one of those. And maybe you're not, maybe you're mm -hmm. somebody who's totally fine on magnesium. And then you take it and you're like, Oh, I don't really notice that big of a difference. Okay. No big deal. But for people that are deficient in that, and then you supplement with that, it makes that big of a difference where it's like, Oh God. Yeah. I knew it right away. As soon as I took it. That's awesome. Yeah. So this weekend, uh, I learned about, um, some of the, 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 some ancient languages, this was at church and they were talking about how they describe different things. And I didn't realize this. So English language isn't it, nearly as descriptive of certain things as certain of some ancient languages. Like for example, like the word love, there's different words for love in some of the ancient languages. A lot of people don't know this. There's like love for your partner, love for your friends. Before. And then there's what's called sacrificial love where you don't have the feeling of it, but you sacrifice yourself uh, for them. It's called agape, right? They have w different words for time too. This one was crazy to me. Kronos is the amount of time, like 60 seconds. Kairos is quality time. So they actually mm. had two different words to describe. I thought that's so fascinating that, and, and you know, language shapes ideas and thoughts and behaviors. A lot of people don't realize this. Like words make a big difference in how you perceive the world. Sure. I wonder how detrimental it's been that we don't describe because the for example, the three word the, the 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 three definitions of love, like you can understand. Like if I say passionate love for your partner, like, oh, I know what that's like. Love you have for your friend, like, yeah, I know what that is. And then and then the kind of love that's totally sacrificial. They're not the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't have words to describe that. I thought that was really fascinating, especially the time one. Are there like, things that you guys are doing? Uh, I, I know this is for uh, kind of where we're all at in our lives. We've shared this many times about, you know, being ultra present and quality time with the family. Are, do you find that there are things that you guys have like implemented or that you go out of your, like, this is like a thing that like, okay, I want to improve being present or I want to improve quality time with my family. Therefore, this is going to become a thing that we either do daily or weekly or monthly even like, have you guys created things like that? Or are there things like, you know, that come to mind that you're like, you know, I, I know Justin used to talk a lot about, and I know you're really good about the the phone thing, right? It's like, Hey, well, I come home from work and the phone goes up on the thing. Yeah. Like I can never get a hold of you past six o'clock. So yeah. kudos to you as being a better dad than me. Uh, that, uh, I don't but, think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss all the So, you know, that's, action. but I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a practice of, of, of that. Are there things like that that you guys have, have done to, to do that? I started implementing stuff with my older kids because they're, uh, they're, teenagers are hard to, like little kids, it's easy to like spend time with them because it's like, you want to hang out? Yes. My teenage kids, uh, it's it's more difficult. So I've started scheduling it. Mm. Uh, well, two things. One is my 15-year-old, when she's in her room, I'll knock on the door, walk in the room, and then stay in her space with her. And I notice that that spurs conversation rather than trying to get her to come out. Just hanging out. There's no just like, hey, daddy wants to talk to you. No, just I just come, come in, sit down, right sit in her bed. Hey, what are you thing. doing? Oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I'll just sit there and, you know, and then, we'll, then conversation starts. Um, and then the other one's scheduling time. If I don't schedule time, then it, it's up missing because like I'm doing homework or I'm doing this thing or I'm going to work. So I'm like this time, this day, you and I are going to go on a hike or whatever. And it's like, cool. So it's on the schedule. So it has to be more intentional. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, we have a free guide. It's the benefits of eating whole foods. This gives you a shopping list. What foods are best for proteins, fats, carbohydrates. There's recipe samples. It's all based on real, whole, natural foods. And it's a free guide. It's totally free. You can get it if you go to wholefoodsguide.com or by clicking on the link in the description below. Um, do you find that they they do it kind of begrudgingly because my dad's telling me I have to do it? Or do you find that they, no. they're they excited to do yeah, it? Yeah, especially when we schedule something that they want to do. Okay, uh, that's yeah, cool. they, they seem to be okay with it, you know? Um, although sometimes you'll feel like <laughs> they don't want to hang around with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the it's think, teenagers in general. Yeah, for me, it's really, it's like it's a lot of that in terms of just going into their own environment and... Um, yeah, like I'll go sit in their room and just kind of wait for them to tell me things and like um, it reveal itself. And for me, it's like, 
I find these opportunities where they're passionate about something. And then I try to think about that ahead of time, find a book or find, um, you know, something that uh, is relevant towards that. Like, for instance, right now, Ethan's really into entrepreneurship. He's like, diving in like full that's so cool deep into it like trying to create his own like like um brand and his own uh the you know the kind of business we all hate which <laughs> yeah. is you know like merchandise and and selling t-shirts and all that kind of stuff but uh and so he's so i got him a few books with that and we kind of talk about it and he's like kind of getting into stocks and all that kind of stuff that's and awesome. then you know everett's like really into skateboarding and and so I'll, I'll just take opportunities. I'll take them down to the skate park. It's just, it's really, it's like, I know what they're kind of what's l driving them right now. And so I want to like intentionally take them, you know, and immerse them in something or like teach yeah. them something or, you know, but you got to step in that they space. like, yeah. yeah. But you have to find out what they like uh, in order to kind of build that conversation. Now, how important do you guys think it is that you also do this for yourself? Yeah. So like, Obviously, we're dads. We we care about being a good dad. I think we're always constantly working mm -hmm. on that. How much do you think is also important that you find something for you? It's completely selfish. Oh, Nobody hard. else. It's your thing. It's what you do. And like, yeah. do you also schedule that and make time for that? That's um, super important. Yeah, that's that's my workouts. That's 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 first and foremost. And then once a, uh, twice a week, I do. There's a men's group that I go to, and then once a week, I'll go and just go meditate on. Uh, these days it's a lot of scripture, but it'd be thinking about things. It's super important because if you're otherwise you're in the mix. Yeah, this is how I find it. I get in the mix and I don't know. I'm not the same person, especially when I come back from something like that. I'm like a totally different person. I think it's important. Yeah, I'm probably the worst at that. Like, mm. yeah, to be completely honest, because I get too focused like on the balance and the semblance of like the family dynamic and like I'm oh what are the kids doing what's you know, how, how am I deficient here, uh, helping Courtney out or whatever it is. And then I'm like, God, I don't have any <laughs> friends. I haven't hung out with anybody. I'm not like, you know, doing anything that I'm passionate about as much, but yeah. then I've, I've tried to start making steps in that direction. And I'm like, music's a big avenue for me with that. And so I'm like kind of scheduling things, but it's like, it's a lot less frequent than me probably stepping into everybody else's thing. So that's an area you yeah, know that I need you, to work on that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've seen you do stuff like that more recent than before. Like you, like, I mean, this, you're getting ready to come up on your trip where you always go like, that was something that yeah. you've made. Yeah. Like that's a like non-negotiable. Like I do. the only thing I have probably I could say, like <laughs> I'm doing this every you year know, if I yeah. have to. Have you guys seen the stats on men's groups? Like how, like how big of an impact they, are, they make for men? Cause men are terrible at, especially when we hit our like middle age, terrible at making friends. Yeah. Like just, we're just not it's true. Good. We yeah. just don't do it. Yeah. Generally speaking, uh, women tend to have more social connections than men do. So when you look at the data on men's groups, um, you know, like you, like once a week you meet up with your buddies and you guys go and do this thing, or especially if it's purpose driven, uh, not just hang out, but like we're all going to go and work on this car, or mm -hmm. we're all going to go and like I go to I, I go to a group called Better Man where you learn how to become a a better man. It's based on Christian values. Um, it's the data on it's amazing. Like it's, and it's, I think it's because we don't do it otherwise. If we don't yeah. schedule it, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's yeah. funny in our relationship. It's actually the flip with Katrina and I, I'm always having to tell her like to go do that. Um, as much as of a, a social friendly person she is, she doesn't take that much time. Not even with her family. She's got such a big family. Well, I mean, sir, I mean, I, would you count that as the same thing? Cause I don't know if I would count that as the same thing. It does something. She's got such a close she's relationship. Incredibly. I mean, yeah. yeah, not a day goes so by. That's that probably she, why she doesn't feel like she needs it. Anyway. Yeah. I don't think she thinks she needs it. Yeah. You know, I don't, I think that she does, she gets so much probably of that from her family. Um, but yeah, I'd say in our household, it, we, the roles are reversed in that area. I'm always, uh, doing stuff with friends, making new friends and mm -hmm. hanging out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was again this weekend with meeting new, new groups of people and, and doing stuff like that. There's so. a lot of this right now is with the car culture, right? That's where you meet a lot of friends. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like, whatever is like, uh, you know, we're all very similar in this way where when we're into something new, like we completely, into it. Yeah, yeah, we're into it and immer fully immersed. And so, um, you know, it just, I think it, to me, that's the easiest way to teach somebody to, if you're an older dad or man and you're, and you're trying to foster that is, one step one is you having a hobby helps, right? Mm -hmm. Having things that you're into, you know, I know Doug's into the calligraphy and the Japanese art and things like that. I'm sure when he goes to those things, he meets people that are, 
you have good conversation with yeah. and you and so that's the key is like first have something you care about and you like doing that you're passionate about and interested in and then immerse yourself in those those types of hobbies on the weekend going out of your way to go do that stuff um and then that's how you uh you meet other men that have similar uh you know passions and things so i yeah i've always yeah. done that this is what arthur brooks talks about how um widows do so much better than widowers i guess a widower is a man a man who's his wife he said the data on men who lose their wife is terrible oh, because they have no know. like social anything. So yeah. it's the loan. I also think Hermit that men too are so, <laughs> yeah. we're so, and again, this we're over generalizing by saying men. Like, of course, but this is just the data. Right, general, right, right, right. Yeah. But typically are horrible at asking for help or directions oh, yeah. or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? All so those things. now all of a sudden the wife is gone and it's like, all of a sudden you got to figure shit out. It's like, you have to go ask or tell people you don't know or you need no, help. You like, become a hermit. You, yeah. you, 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 na you named it. I, I've known widowers yeah. and they tend to be hermits. 100%. You know? Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah, it's yeah. funny. I just uh, um, speaking of men and, and, and guys and stuff. I, I I ran into this kid who I knew him when he was little. So his dad was a friend of mine, and um, apparently he's been following us right on uh, through Mind Pump. He texted me a while ago. Hey, this is so and so son. I'm into working out now. So I'm like, oh, that's so cool. So I sent him some you know some of our supplement overstock in the back, and I said, hey, what program do you want? I'll set you up with a program. So he's been following. He's getting into jujitsu. Anyway, I ran into him. And uh, he's like, he really likes it. He wants to become maybe like a personal trainer. Oh, so yeah. I pointed him. I said, nice. all right. Yeah. And so I said, all right, good place to start. It's like we talk, like we talk about on the show. I said, start at a big box gym because they'll do a lot of the, you'll learn a lot of how to build your business through them. Mm -hmm. They'll provide you with the leads. You got uh, people working out that you can talk to. Um, you'll learn a lot from a lo lots of other trainers. Um, and so he needed a national cert. So I said, go to NASM. I sent him our link. And uh, I told him to go, you know, obviously first get CPT, but then get the correctional exercise specialist one. So we were talking about oh, great. all that. And yeah, it was really cool to see his kid grow up and now he wants to be a trainer. Oh, that is great. Because he listens to the show. NASM so. such a great found, And there's tons of great certs, but NASM, I think, is just one of the most well-rounded certs. If I was going to tell someone just to, like they'd have no certs, go start there. And then I always say that the corrective exercise specialist. Cert that was the that game have, changer cert. It is another level, though. I tell you what, like the. It ain't the, easy. Yeah, you need to really understand their CPT really well because they build on it in CES. Mm -hmm. It's like they assume you know all that information. Mm -hmm. And so you definitely want to get the first one really, really, really. Had uh, I known that correctional exercise from a trainer's perspective, okay? So if you're a trainer listening, like this is, there's almost nothing that will make you more money faster and bring more value to your people than correctional exercise. Knowledge. Hands down. Nothing. Not even close. Mm -hmm. It's not exercise performance. It's not that's fun. It's not powerlifting. That's cool. It's not building muscle. That's fun too and cool too. It's literally correctional exercise. It applies the to most every, valuable thing. It applies to everybody. That's why. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, you can improve anybody to deal with pain even, and restriction. Even when I thought I was going to be a trainer who's going to train athletes when yep. I was a kid when I was training, it, the amount of, I mean, have you guys ever met a retired athlete or someone who is an athlete who doesn't have all kinds of dysfunction <laughs> and out of balance? Yeah. Uh, and so impossible. like, even that, even that, like, I wish yeah. I really understood correctional exercise on, on that capacity and what it has done for me personally, figure solving my own problems out, being able to help clients. It applies to every range, no matter their age, no matter their skill set, no matter their level of training. Like, yeah, I, I don't know why that's not, like hammered more because I think, I think trainers tend to get so into valuable. fitness and they think fat loss, health, muscle building and correctional exercise is more like a rehab. I think you said it right. The first thing fat loss. I think yeah, that's all. Yeah. I mean, that's 65. That's what gets me the door. When yeah. I sold training as a trainer early days and I was a good salesman. Okay. I've always been a good salesman. It's a natural thing for me. But what I sold was fat loss and muscle building. When I learned correctional exercise. So, so here's the difference. If I do an assessment on somebody I can sell you on the fact that I'm gonna you're gonna burn body fat and build muscle with me, but I can't show you that. It's it's, it's one assessment. It's impossible. I'm not gonna show you fat loss or muscle building. It's gonna take a while. Yeah. But I could show you pain relief in one in in 15 minutes. Yeah. I could show you pain relief right now yeah. with mm -hmm. correctional exercise. And when I did that, if I had someone in front of me, their shoulder hurt or they had they couldn't squat all the way down because their heels would come up or something like that, then we do some correctional exercise and then I'd show them right there, like, oh my God, my shoulder doesn't hurt nearly as much. Done. It was like a guaranteed they're going to hire me because yeah. I just showed them my value yeah. right out the gates. That alone for trainers, like that alone everything. is yeah, yeah. everything. Huge, everything. huge difference. You know, speaking of trainers and, and helping trainers, Doug, when is the next webinar that Sal and I are doing and what is the title of it? 
you know, this is something for our audience. We really didn't announce free it. Free education for Yeah, training. we didn't announce it on the last one. And we had a nice show. I think we had a few, uh, uh, over a thousand, I think 1,500 people signed up for it. A few hundred, I think, signed up for the live. And then, of course, over the course of the week, because once you sign up, you get the replay, even if you can't make the live event. But it's absolutely free. There's no, no charge to it. Uh, every other month, Sal and I will be hosting uh, these webinars, and really, it's well. They'll have different titles. Some of them will be the last one we did was how to build a six figure business as a personal trainer. Um, it's really geared around being a better coach, trainer, building your business, uh, and we're just going to make this a, a consistent thing. We're just going to just again come from this place of let's just continue to add value to the coaches and trainers, making them better. It's free for people to show up. You just sign up for the webinar, even if you can't make the live event, uh, it'll be emailed to you. What's the next one, Doug? November 12th at 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, The key for personal trainers to retain clients during the holiday season. Oh, yeah. So that'll be the topic. We're going to literally talk about how... So for trainers, uh, during the holiday season, this is a time when sometimes you lose clients. So we're going to talk about how to keep them and how to get more clients. That's the slowest time in fitness, by the way. If you manage a gym or train people, you know, it's like uh, this could be really, really tough on your business. But um, there are strategies that will make you as successful or more successful during the holiday season, it's uh, it's kind of cool because where do you uh, sign up for this? Is there can they sign up now or no? They just have to kind of. So stay there will be uh, notifications in the free trainer forum, uh, which is personal trainer growth secrets. Oh, so just powered go there. by Mind Pump, you'll see all the replays, for example, as well as uh, future events. That's the that Facebook we're group. Have. That's the Facebook. So go group. join that Facebook group, also free. Personal trainer growth secrets. Yeah. Yes, and that's us. And if you're powered if by you're following Pump. that, and you're following the. Uh, uh, mind pump trainer page on IG, you're going to get notifications on all this stuff. So just make sure you follow and then turn on the notifications. What's been really cool and interesting for me. So those people that have been listening for a really long time, uh, prior to mind pump, uh, the four of us never worked together. Although we have a similar background, we all worked for the same company at one point. We all didn't get a chance to work together. Justin and I have worked together. Um, and, and I guess you could say Doug and Sal at some capacity worked together before we all got together. Um, but I've always thought about, man, imagine if the four of us were together in a club, you know, oh, yeah. 15, 20 years yeah. ago. Like, Running man, a club? Yeah. Oh, man, what would we- crazy. Do you know yeah. I fantasize about that? Well, well, I do. I think, <laughs> I think about that. And, I do. I swear to God. And complete yeah. transparency that uh, this has kind of lit that fire in me because it's the closest thing to kind of like what I did when I ran clubs, right? Yeah. So- I know you GM. You did both fitness manager and GM, uh, and so you handled a lot of the the sales uh, mm. and people and stuff, and the sales team, which I did also. And I think we had that was some we had in somewhere we both, even though we had different departments, we cross pollinated a lot with the other department. So to have us both kind of uh, mentoring these groups of people coming through. Man, it's so funny. Like uh, a couple of times I've been like, oh man, shit, I haven't even prepared for that webinar. It's like, oh, I'll be okay. It's, I, I know the topic. We'll be And it just, it reignites it this. It spurs all these memories. Yeah. And, I know, yeah. Right? I mean, I find myself like, oh <laughs> hey, shit. Hey, the hour now. comes up so oh, fast. real dude. fast. Real yeah. fast. Because this is what, yeah. this is what I did most of my career. This is what I love to do. Like I've never, uh, you know, I, I, I've never hung my hat on, I'm one of the best trainers in the world. I, by no means do I think I'm that person at all. I think it's also why I've also been challenged with social media and YouTube. Is like I don't like putting myself out there as like I'm one of these experts. Like my what made me successful in fitness was my business acumen. Um, I was decent at that and and got better at that through my 20s. Uh, I was an okay trainer. You know, I wasn't the, the the brightest trainer ever, and so. This this is more my wheelhouse of helping trainers build their business, and so it's reignited that. It's fire funny for you me. said you said that about running a club. I often fantasize. The re- only reason why we would never do it is the, the amount of hours and time and energy it would yeah. take. We just we would just. Yeah, me and Kyle are actually talking about that a bit because uh, still like thinking of things to kind of shoot that would be good, great Dude. content. And it's like you know to come in and do kind of gym, gym overhaul kind of. Oh, thing. I was yeah. like, that's my dream. I was like Sal's been chomping at yeah, this yeah. idea. I would love yeah. to do a gym rescue where we go in and in 30 days turn it around totally I mean, and it would be made for i mean it would be made for tv because be beneficial days. for oh, the yeah. gym it'd be great content i'd have some of those old school sales meetings that they you can't do anymore because you get fired <laughs> we can do it because it's a show you know, type of deal. just have sign waivers yeah. Yeah. i can get crazy throw chairs yeah okay yeah, cool dude. yeah I would, I would love to. I mean, it's- It'd be it's, fun, it's def- So I didn't I didn't know this was going to ignite that. Um, so I'm really excited. I mean, this we're getting ready to wrap up or we're coming into, I should say, not wrap up, but come into Q4 and wrap this year up. 
uh, for this launching this business. And, uh, you know, all in all, a couple of hiccups with hires and stuff like that. But now that we've got it all ironed out, I feel like, boy, this thing is just is running on all cylinders and a blast. I think we've really figured out uh, the best way to impact these coaches and trainers. And that's really kind of the mission behind this is like I, I, I kind of, you know, there's that piece of me that has that like I want to be able to have uh, a bunch of trainers that we've influenced that that becomes a standard that people ask like, oh, have you been have you been coached by the mind pump have you do you have a cert, cert? do you go through there like i want to create a culture around the trainers that come through yes. this course and learn from us and it starts by us providing all this stuff for for free and showing everybody what uh what we can add as far as value to their to their business and then we'll take it from there it's but fun man it is so i try i love trainers always 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 will love trainers they're the best people in the fitness space keeps us grounded yeah for by sure. far so. um i have a shout out for, for the end of the show. Good. Let's hear it. Do it. Uh, so it's a book that I'm reading right now. This is one of the groups that I'm a part of. It's called Marriage That Works. And it talks about, from a biblical perspective, uh, how to have a successful marriage. What's crazy about the book, and it's by Chip Ingram, uh, which I think you know He's who my is. pastor yeah, growing up, yep. So, it's, so the book is, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing to me because, obviously, the way we know, the way we define marriage traditionally, right? One man, one woman. That was created... That's a Judeo-Christian creation, essentially. And they also have a blueprint for how it's supposed to work. So it makes sense that, well, they created it. Why not look at their blueprint? And it's so opposite. <laughs> it's so opposite of what the culture and world tells you that everything I'm hearing and reading in there. Yep. And Very the, countercultural. The reason, why it's, the reason why, to me, it's so uh, exciting is because I understand a space in the world that is like that as well, which is health and fitness. I've often said this. If you follow what the culture in the world tells you is healthy, if you live the way that they tell you, you will be sick, fat, and unhealthy. It's just a fact. You ha it's, it's oftentimes the opposite of what they tell you that's going to make you healthy. Well, of course, it's like this with marriage as well. The, the culture tells you to do it a certain way, and we have a, what, 50% divorce rate. So what, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that was in the book that's just crazy. You know, Traditional marriage therapy or counseling or whatever or culture will say, when you get married, Find out how to express your needs. Make sure your partner can meet your needs by expressing them so that they can meet your needs. You guys meet each other's needs or whatever. That's not at all what the biblical perspective says. The biblical perspective says your goal is to meet all of their needs, is to submit to them and meet all of their needs. And it becomes competition over who can meet the other person's needs more. So it's all about serving, that agape love, serving the other person, sacrificial mm -hmm. yeah. love, which is pretty wild. Yeah. Totally opposite of what you've heard. Sure. From the culture. Anyway, there's a lot of other stuff in there that's pretty wild. Very so, good. Good stuff. Awesome. Elemented is an electrolyte powder. It's high in sodium. It's high enough in sodium. In fact, most electrolyte powders don't have enough. That is not artificially flavored. Uh, there's no artificial sweeteners. There's also no sugar. It just tastes real good. And it gives you the electrolytes you need for better workouts, for better sleep, better pumps, especially if you're on a ketogenic diet or you don't eat a diet that's high in high, heavily processed foods. This can be a game changer. Anyway, go to their link. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get a free sample pack on that link with any drink mix purchase. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Nadine from Toronto. Hi, Nadine. Hey, Nadine. How can we help Good you? Good morning. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. All right. So nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, okay, I'm just going to jump right into my question. So I've gotten three DEXA scans since last August. I've gotten one in August, November, and May of 2024. In between the first and second DEXA, which were three months apart, I gained one pound of fat and four pounds of muscle. And the DEXA that I took today, which was the one that I sent in May, um, it showed that I gained one pound of fat and gained no new lean mass. The DEXA scan is very detailed and shows where the lean mass and fat mass is distributed. It also so shows the relative skeletal muscle index, which basically tells me how dense my muscles are. And that only went up by 0.02. In the last five months, I had some weight fluctuations and have started a cut with 1750. And it's been four weeks at the time when I sent in my question. I've noticed some shrinkage in my stomach. Also, that was confirmed based on my DEXA. And I've noticed that my shoulders have gotten leaner. And that has been my priority the last two months. 
Even though the numbers did not reflect that, I work out four to five times a week and I usually meet my protein intake based on my tracking, based on all the, those four weeks that I was doing my cut. I'm not sure what I should do next and whether I should change my workout routine. I was thinking of working out three times a week consistently, getting my 10K steps and incorporating a kickboxing class once a week for a new stimulus. Just a bit of background. Um, I'm... I'm, I have scrawny arms. Okay. They're very scrawny. I'm trying to get them bigger. Um, I've been, that has been my focus forever. I have big thighs, small waist, small upper body, and I'm just trying to get the opposite of that. Um, I tried maps anabolic for a little bit, but it just didn't really resonate with me because the workouts were taking too long. And I just find that I need like a workout a day rather than just doing mini trigger sessions. Um, now I've been doing kickboxing. I've noticed some strength gains in my upper body, but um, I, I don't know if what I'm doing is right because I haven't gotten a DEXA. I just feel like I look better, but I still, I don't look toned enough. Like I, it looks like I don't work out when you look at me. When was the last time you reverse dieted? Um, so I just got back from vacation. And the last time I did that was, I don't even know if I've ever reverse dieted. Like, do you mean in yeah. do we have yeah, that's, surplus? That, so right away, what comes to mind for me is that you're in this kind of maintenance to deficit place and you're trying to build muscle in your upper body and it's just not happening. You're not giving, and then, and then what you're doing is you're adding cardio to it on top of that. It's just working against you, your goal. Our goal right now should be to build muscle and to increase your calories. So I'd like to see you on 18, 19, and then to 2000 to 22 to 23, eventually get you up to like 2,400 to 2,600 calories a day. And then we reverse and come back down. And so the, the initial goal is for us to increase calories, build muscle. You want to just, just a little bit. We don't want to put on 10 pounds or 15 pounds on the scale, but going up three, five pounds, not a big deal because we're trying to build and focus on building muscle. After we've done that for like a month or so, then we can reverse for a little bit and then lean out a tiny bit and then turn around and do it again and just keep, keep doing that you know, bulk reverse diet to a, a cut, cut for a short period of time, then back into it until you get to a place where you can maintain your mass or maintain your size and eating 2,400 calories a day. Like that's where we need to be. Are you, uh, do you remember what your body fat percentage was from your last scan? Yes, it was 27.2%. I had about 35 pounds of fat and, uh, that's crazy. You don't look like that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you, no, don't. you don't. No, you don't. Um, you don't look like that. At I think all. I had. I, I actually, I, I can pull it up, but it was thirty-five pounds of fat, basically, and the rest was all mu like lean muscle. Okay, and then in that period of time, the the last two tests, right, the one where you said you just gained a pound of fat, and nothing else. Did you notice any other changes? Any strength gains? Any stamina yeah, so gains? I definitely noticed strength gains, and I was going up in my upper body stuff. So I'm doing. I was doing push press. Press, push press it, presses, bicep curls, shoulder presses, all of that was going up, but it just, as how soon much, as I- How much did it go up? Uh, Probably five pounds per side, honestly, like in my, okay. in uh, five pounds for my bicep curl. And I think it went up to 10 pounds with my push press. Wow. Okay. So, so um, which one do you believe the strength gains or the DEXA scan? Yeah. My strength gains. Yeah. So which one is more objective, right? So in other words, if I take five pounds and I have a five pound plate and I weigh it here or I weigh it in Toronto or I weigh it in Florida, how much is gonna how much is it gonna weigh everywhere? Five pounds. That's that's about as objective as it gets. Your strength gains are clear. DEXA scan, not clear. One pound up or down, could there, there's a margin of error there that's uh, definitely larger than the one pound that you saw on that one uh, on that one test. The problem is we tend to believe the scale and we tend to believe these tests more than we believe our own objective minds. You got stronger. That means you're moving in the right direction. The DEXA scan says you you know what it said, but I would look at the DEXA scan, look in the mirror, look at my weight, you know, going up, and be like, okay. I think I'll wait till I take another two or three DEXA scans before I start to take it more seriously. Nadine, are you are you following my docu series right now? Uh, no, I've been on vacation the last few weeks, so I have not seen anything. Okay. So you absolutely need to do that. So you need to get caught up on YouTube on the, and I'm daily posting and this is uh, yesterday's rant I went on. So if you go to my Instagram right now, you'll see a rant on there is addressing this issue here overnight. Okay. I got on the scale and I put six pounds on overnight and I explain 
what happened, what, what happened physiologically. And then I also explained what's going on psychologically to me, like, oh shit, I got fat. I did this one. And so I go through all this. So it's a, it's very similar to what's going through your head right now. When you see that, oh my God, the Dexter scan isn't moving in the right directions yet. I feel like I'm doing all these right uh -huh. things. Like watch that. So watch the rant I went on last night and then get back on the, on the YouTube channel, mind pump TV mm -hmm. and start to watch that docu series. Cause I'm going to document this whole process. And literally what I'm doing is kind of what I would coach you to do right now, which is slowly increasing calories, get stronger. I'm going right. to build my metabolism up and then I'm going to shred and come down. And so you could follow literally what I'm doing. I have two follow-up questions for that. Then. Sure. then for somebody who, I guess like anabolic, it wasn't like I wasn't the best person for it. What would you recommend the split to be? Because I'm doing kickboxing, just I'm doing it for fun and I'm doing it for cardio just for once a week, just for heart health. And I want to keep doing that. But what do you think the best split would be for somebody who wants to work out an hour a day, four or five times a week. An hour a day, like, four or five times a week. That's a lot. Yeah, it's probably too yeah. much. Plus, with your cardio, it's a lot. That's yeah, that's, a lot. Pr that's probably gonna be I'd, too much. I'd rather see you on Maps 15. That's what I'm running right now. Mm -hmm. It's Maps 15. Two yeah. exercises a day, six days a week. It'd be about yeah, 20 minutes. 20, 25 minutes. It takes minutes about a day. 30. It takes like 25. Am I gonna get jacked from that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could watch. You yeah. Could watch. Um, that's my point. Let my, me put it this way: you're, you're more likely to get jacked doing that than you are doing an hour four or five days a week in the gym. Yep. You're unlikely to get jacked doing an hour, four or five days a week in the I, gym. I think you're going to, I think just please do me this one thing in the next 24 to 48 hours, get caught up on the docu-series. So much of what we're talking about right now is stuff that I cover. I cover all this like, and, and you're watching me kind of build and start and I'm having conversations with you through the workout, like explaining why this, why not that. Uh, I think it'll really help where you're currently at right now. The other option would be like Maps Muscle Mommy, which is four days a week, I believe. Uh, the workouts are a bit longer. You could also do something like that, but I would not do a you know like a Maps Aesthetic or Maps Split for most people. No. Mm -mm. For most people, that's just it's it's too much, and then what you end up going backwards. You end up going backwards with your results. So Maps 15 or Maps Muscle Mommy would be more appropriate for someone like you with a slow reverse diet. And then watch your strength gains. If you're getting stronger in your upper body, it's exactly the right direction. That's that's what you want. Because as you the strength gains come, so does the muscle. Sorry? Sorry? You know what I worry about? I always worry about that when I'm putting on pounds on my upper body stuff, I'm cheating and using my lower body to help like get that bicep curl up. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to be so aware of it, but I'm just always worried that that's the case. Like, How do I know whether I'm cheating my way into- You're going to love getting... that. I cover that in the docuseries also. Yeah, but also so if, if, it's a <laughs> if it's a question, okay, if it's a question, you're fine. When you're cheating, you know, like it's clear, like, oh, I, that rep was, that was cheating. It's not like, I wonder if I did something a little different to get an extra 10 pounds up. No, no, to get 10 more pounds up through cheating is obvious. To get 10 more pounds up through strength is, you would you would question yourself afterwards if that was the case. So I, I'm not worried about that. But you could always film yourself. You could always film yourself, compare the two videos. And then if it's hard for you to see it, then you're fine. I also give tips in there on things that you can do strategically while you lift to keep yourself from cheating. So that's literally in there too. Perfect. So just, I guess I have to watch yeah, this. Just watch mm -hmm. it. I think you're gonna. It's gonna answer a lot of questions for you. I would prefer you on Map 15, but I'm not against Muscle Mommy either. So we can shoot either one over. Which to one you. you want? Which one? I think I would rather Muscle Mommy That's as opposed figured. to. 15. Okay. Okay. To spend the time yeah. at the gym. Yeah, yeah, we'll send it to you. Okay. Thank you guys so much. You I appreciate it. your time. Yeah, you got it. And and stop believing the DEXA scan so much yeah. <laughs> over everything else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, I just needed to hear you guys say it okay, because yeah. the last four months I've just been in a whirlwind. So I'm I'm happy to hear you guys say it because you're the only people I listen to in this industry. All All right. Right. So thank you. Thank you. We got you. Yeah. I'll see you Thanks. on YouTube. Have a great day. Thank you, Nadine. All right. I'll see you. Bye, guys. Yeah, I just got to say this. If you tie your life quality, your happiness, your contentment to a DEXA scan or a body fat test or the mm -hmm. scale, you have a problem mm -hmm. and, and, and you need to address it because the other side of that, if you don't address that, here's the problem. You will never find contentment. You will never find happiness. You will never find uh, improvement in quality of life from those things. They're just never going to do that not for you. Tell the whole story. They ever. will always let you down. Always, always let you down. Because even if you get the measurements you want, you're still going to question it. And then if it goes in the wrong direction, forget about. It. So those are tools to be used in a in a in a nice blend of data to look at. But I'm going to be honest with you. When I train clients, the last ten years of my career, 
I weighed nobody. I tested body fat tests so rarely. It was, um, I mean, I had clients that were with me for years and I didn't do body fat tests because it was mostly a waste of time. Yeah. Not only that, but it just did this. It caused uh, problems. It would, it would set people back. It would detract their progress totally. and their momentum. Yeah, I think everybody uh, approaches these the wrong way. It's actually, I mean, you guys know I'm the, obviously the one who likes all this stuff. I utilize this as a tool. Um, and I used to use it with the clients too, but there was a lot of conversations around this. And uh, it's not the end-all be-all. It's just another tool that we have to get an idea of what we're doing. To me, it's very obvious what's going on here. I mean, she's too low of calories. She's trying to build muscle in her upper body. Yeah. And she's probably, and I talk about all this stuff, like she's probably tog toggling back and forth with, getting her body just what it needs to days where she's not getting enough what she needs while also adding all this volume and stuff. And then it's like, she's for all the work. And I get it because it's frustrating, right? You, you, right. you, you think you're doing such a good job because you're, let's say for 90% of the time, you're making really good food choices. You're exercising four days a week. You want to see the return on it. And then you go take this test that everybody talks about how accurate it is. And you go, Oh my God, like I'm doing not, why am I putting all this work in to see That's no right. change? And, it's well, there, what really is, the, is okay. There's something that we need to tweak. And what it is, is like where her calories are at for what she's trying to accomplish is just not working. She needs this is increase. why I like putting people on the path of just monitoring the strength because you just saw it right there. Like my weight, my strength went up, but my DEXA scan said I went up a pound of body fat. So I'm sad. It's yeah. like you got stronger. <laughs> like that's the best metric there is if you had to pick a single metric that would be the one well yeah we just hope that there's these formulas that uh, can explain everything and i think that's like the hope that we have like going into it it, it is like it brings awareness but it's not going to ever tell you all the things this is why yeah. you have to like really listen to your body and, and be objective with what's actually happening our next caller is kara from maryland hi kara how can we help you hello it's weird to see you guys in person because I only listen on the podcast, like through audio, never see you guys in person. So uh, pretty cool. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope you're happy or not disappointed. <laughs> well, I, I've seen you individually, like the, the, um, prime pro webinar, okay. Justin, you on maybe Ben Greenfield's podcast, et cetera. So I've never not seen you guys, but it's just the setup I've never right. seen before. Right, cool. so, How can awesome. we help you? Yeah, so I'm going to read my question. And first of all, um, thank you for entertaining me every time I work out because uh, it is really just fun to listen to you guys talk. And uh, I'm a nutritionist, so I'd love to hear your advice that you give out on nutrition as well. Awesome. Great. Thank you. All right. So uh, each sport I've done, um, I've occurred a pull on my glute at the point where the glute and ham meet and they connect. And right now I'm big into competing in singles pickleball and doubles as well. So a lot of times it's like reaching out to lunge for a ball in a very fast manner and then springing back up. So um, I've been lifting weights consistently since 1988 um, and do yoga for stretching probably a few days, um, like three or four times a week. I started MAPS Anabolic Advanced in the past. I've done MAPS Aesthetic and uh, some female physique type programs. Uh, you talk about different plan, planes of motion, and so I'm wondering, is it that all the programs I've done in the past are in one plane, and if so, which um, program or preventative exercises do you think would be beneficial? Okay, let's back up for a second. So it's probably your hamstring attachment where you're feeling the pain. So if it's up, up where the glute and the hamstring meet, so it's like deep up in that, yeah, it's probably your hamstring. It's probably not a glute pull, although glute pulls are not uh, impossible. They're far less common than hamstring pulls. And you're saying this is when you're doing like a like a, a, a reach, right? Like you reach out with your foot and you kind of get down in a deep lunge? Yeah, so I'm like lunging out deep for the ball and I like reach that out for magic. it. And then as soon as I spring back up, I'm feeling like I, you know, a little tweak here and there. Yeah. It's never something that like it puts me completely out where I can't play a sport or something like that. But I, uh, I definitely feel like there's some, something going on. Maps performance. Yeah. So, yeah. so a repeat, repeated injury in the same spot typically points to some type of an instability mm -hmm. or a strength imbalance. Okay. So an example would be, uh, every time you work out your lower body, there's a range of motion that you train in and you're really strong in that range of motion. But when you get outside of that range of motion, um, you don't have as much strength and stability. And so when you're playing a dynamic sport uh, or doing a dynamic movement, 
your muscles are strong, but you're moving outside of the range of motion they're used to training in. So trying to explode or move quickly outside of that range of motion can result uh, in injury. So first thing I would look at would be your range of motion when you do exercises like Romanian deadlifts, single leg deadlifts, squats, barbell squats, those types of things. Um, are you using a full range of motion? If not, I'd go lighter and use a more full range of, and pause at the bottom. I pause at the bottom with tension. And then I would look at hip stability. So if you're not doing any lateral strengthening, um, any hip mobility movements like the ones you'll see in Prime Pro, those will be good to do kind of on a regular basis because there's obviously an imbalance. There's some kind of a strength imbalance that's occurring um, that's causing this repeated uh, well, issue. Well, just based on what you told us, right, in terms of like your preference of style of training and, um, you know, going more into the physique side and staying in that sagittal plane so everything's sort of in front and behind you, um, you know, it would definitely benefit you to – you know, work on lateral stability, work on lateral type exercises, you know, rotational moves. Um, and so, I mean, it just immediately screams to me, this is why we created performance. Um, and, and this is, this program highlights that very specifically, especially in phase two. Um, but I think that uh, it, there's a lot of people just sort of like dismiss the fact that if I'm, if I'm placing my body in a very specific position, I don't really have a lot of strength stability in that position. Uh, to now add acceleration to that, uh, you know, really leaves you susceptible to like pulls and to, you know, even further sort of uh, issues where it may lead to injury. So, um, you know, not only is it beneficial for you in terms of like overall strength, but, you know, in terms of like your longevity and your pursuits with, you know, playing pickleball and all those types of activities, um, just to be able to regain that sort of strength and stability uh, in like, the split stance positions and in these different directional movement patterns, everybody should consider this. Uh, you really should live in three of our programs, uh, mass performance, mass performance, advance and symmetry. Those three programs right there. And we'll get you started on one of them. We'll send one of them to you, but based off of your goals, yeah. the activity that you yeah, do, symmetry be good. Uh, those, those three programs are going to serve you the best. And you'll, you'll build in a, you, I can tell you already have a really, a really great physique already, but you'll continue, you'll maintain a great, physique, the way it looks, and then also support all the things you like doing activity-wise, those are the programs for you. And you'll get a lot of benefit from all three of those. When you, uh, by the way, yoga uh, or yoga tiles, and now yoga can be helpful, but in many cases, what you're doing is you're just working on uh, flexibility, not necessarily, and I say necessarily because there are ways to do yoga that help with this, but not necessarily on strength and stability. It's a little bit more around flexibility improve flexibility without strength leads to instability. So you, if you get into a range of motion that let's say you can stretch to, but you don't have a lot of strength in, and then you try to move quickly out of that, it's like you're asking for uh, an injury. When you do your, when you do your lower body exercises, what does your range of motion look like? Yeah, it's funny. You should say that because I recently went from a heavier squat to a lighter squat to get my hips lower and that has made a huge difference already. So I haven't mm. gotten too many of those tweaks during a game anymore. Um, so that that already, you know, oh, yeah. has I, helped in a big way. Now you've been you've been strength training for a long time. So what I would do is back way off on the weight because otherwise you'll hurt yourself with this too. Okay. So a little word of warning: challenging your range of motion when you've been strength training a long time, your tendency is going to be to con oh I, oh I can do it now. Let me add weight, and then you hurt yourself. So I would go light, uh, like way lighter, and really work on deep ranges of motion for things like squats. Yeah. Create a lot of tension in those low positions. Yes, lunges, Romanian deadlifts. And then pause, when you feel like you're getting stronger, rather than adding weight, pause at the bottom for three to five seconds. Hold that position, then come up controlled. We need to build strength in the stretch position. We need to build strength in the position that you're hurting yourself in. And that's not going to happen. So I'm assuming up until relatively recently, your squats were like just parallel. Uh, yeah, probably just a little under, but not yeah. too much under. Yeah. yeah. So, and you've been doing, and you've been strength training for a long time. So yeah. you're probably really strong. So then you got really strong muscles. Then you go play a, a game that's fast. You move outside of that range of motion. You've got all these strong muscles pushing you, but you don't have the stability in that new range of motion. And then you hurt yourself. This is how people who lift weights hurt themselves when they do when they go to do something that's outside of what they typically train. This is why it's such this is why full ranges of motion 
and training in different planes is so important because you could have all this great strength and stability, but you know the, the real world and stuff like that moves you out of that. And if you don't train in those other ranges of motion, then you're just a really strong person that now moved outside of your track, and then you get a, you get an injury. Yeah. So as far as the split stance squats or the uh, Bulgarian split stance, can't even say the word. Um, how how high or how important is it to have the the foot behind you, like what height? Because I find like I'm only five two, so the bench seems to be really too, too high. high for it me. Is, it is too and high. so I put it on like one of those steps, like people do mm -hmm. step aerobics yeah, on, go. and I put like a few a risers option. under that. Yeah, that, that works. That, there's a good there's a yeah. good video I did on Mind Pump TV a long time ago. So if you go to my YouTube channel Mind Pump TV and look up Bulgarian split squats, and it's it's one of the ones that I demoed. Uh, I show you how to set up with it. And I, I actually set the Bulgarian split squat up from the bottom position. Mm -hmm. Most people put the hook their leg on something and then they kind of hop into the position and they go. Right. I think it's mm -hmm. a terrible way to set up the Bulgarian squat. So I show you how to set it up from the down position and that's how you should judge where your foot and should then, go. And then go down low enough to where you feel that stretch, where you feel okay. that, that little point in the glute hamstring area. Like, oh, there it is. That's where I would start the rep. And I would go light. I would go light and, and yeah. slow down the rep and build strength there. Okay, great. Sounds great. So right. is in, in the performance program or any of the others, do they do lateral lunges yes. um, yeah. in that? Is performance that, okay. performance is going to be- Yeah, we're going we're gonna to send you maps performance, get you started, um, follow that one. And then if you want afterwards, go to performance advanced and or symmetry. Mm -hmm. those, are the, those are the three okay. programs that are going to serve you so well. Cool. You're going to love Great. the matrix lunges. <laughs> what? Everybody does. You're going to love the matrix lunges. Everybody yeah. talks okay. about those. Yeah, they're challenging. They're good for you, though. You're going to yeah. love them. Never heard of them, so I'm excited. <laughs> awesome. All right, Karen. Yeah, thanks for calling Great. in. Thank you, guys, so much. All right. Yeah, if, if you ever want to injure a big, strong bodybuilder, you just move him outside of what he's used to doing and tell him to move fast. Yeah. And you will hurt yourself. The crazy part is it doesn't take much. I'm, no. a, I'm a walking example of no. this. So it's like you don't even, I mean, the way I tore my pack was so embarrassing. Look, you get a drag car that's yeah. got, you know, a thousand horsepower. And if you drive it straight, you're fine. Hit the gas and turn the steering wheel. What happens to that car? It flips and explodes. It's got a lot of power to move in one direction, yeah. and that makes it a liability moving outside that direction. So, if you're strong and and you got you know you've built quite a lot of muscle over the years, like you're way more uh, susceptible to some of these like ranges of motion that you're unfamiliar to because of that strong, uh, uh, you know, output that you have, the capacity you have for you know, really moving with, yep. with a lot of acceleration intensity. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have that kind of support system in place and you don't have that stability to then, uh, be able to harness that kind of power, uh, it's, it's really a vulnerable spot that you got to consider. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October maps. Muscle mommy is 50% off half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Amanda from Tennessee. Amanda, what's happening? Good morning. How Thank you guys you? so much for having me. How you doing? How can we help you? Well, uh, just to, well, first of all, let me say thank you because I found you guys several months ago and I've pretty much listened to nothing else since. Um, I don't have anybody else in my life who focuses on fitness and nutrition like I do. So having that support and reinforcement every day is like so helpful. So thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> Love it. So a little bit of background. I'm 46 years old, uh, 5'1", about 140 pounds. Um, I've focused on nutrition and fitness for about 12 years. Um, so I've literally done everything you can think of. If you name an exercise program, I've done it, uh, as well as a diet program. And then after finding you guys, I realized all these years I've been doing it wrong. So it's it's been cardio and uh, low calorie, and I'm, I've shifted everything. So I've upped my, um, my calories. I've, I've been at 1,200 for probably many, many years, and so – you know, trying the reverse dieting has been very scary, but I've done it. I'm up to 1400 calories a day, um, 120 grams of protein, then fiber, fat, carbs after that. So I feel like I'm, I'm making the changes that I need to make. It's just very frustrating to not see any of my numbers change. Um, the weight doesn't change and I don't, I don't focus on the weight, but I do in body scans and and try to, to monitor and just nothing changes. So I'm just kind of desperate to figure out what I need to tweak and what I need to do to get moving in the right direction. Okay. I, I have some insight for you, Amanda. You mind if I, if I go through your question, cause you wrote it in, if I go through. Yes, some of the stuff absolutely. Okay. So 
you've gone through pretty much every popular diet, keto, low carb, low calorie, low fat, fasting. You've worked out uh, every workout, Orange Theory, nine rounds, strength training, personal training, boot camp. Doug, if you could scroll down, there was more there. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, you're, you mentioned your numbers. You said, hey, why am I not the uh, best, uh, essentially the, the epitome of what you would consider health? First off, why do you feel like you're not healthy? That's one question. And the second question I have is you you went up from 1,200 calories, which you said you've been at for years, up to 1,400, and, and then the scale didn't move or it did move? Uh, well, it fluctuated. Um, but, you know, I've tried to focus more on my lean muscle mass and body fat percentage. Okay. So the weight has moved up and down, but the muscle mass and the body per percentage have stayed the same, even though I've really shifted the focus. I started mass 15. Um, and let me address your first question. And yes. I really should probably word that better because I am getting all of the, the effects, the healthy effects. I feel good. good. My energy is good. good. I feel stronger. Good. And I guess what I should say is when I'm not the, the body fat percentage has always concerned me because I know okay. that that's high. And when I can't get that to budge, that's what's now, a little more understandable. Worse. Now, Amanda, you are saying the right things, but do you feel what you're saying? Is that <laughs> how you really feel? Or are you just telling me? What I you really know do. You're supposed to, okay, good, good. This is, really this, is do. this is excellent. You said your weight fluctuated. Did that mean it went up and down a little bit and it's kind of like stable? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you went up 200 calories, which is probably scary. That's not that much by the way, but I know it's scary you know? for somebody that was stuck yes. at 1200. Well, for a long in the time. context of somebody doing 1200, yeah, 200 is actually a, a that, good, decent uh, amount. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and nothing, your body weight kind of stabilized. That's a huge win. Is it? Yes. Yes. yes oh my is. God. Yes, it is. You, you ate 200 more cats, like a little meal you added, which was probably scary. Your body weight. It was, but I started to realize I couldn't fit the macros. Good. Trying to make 120 grams of protein right. and everything else fit in That's 1200 right. calories was impossible. Good. That's right. That's Good. right. And now you've been following MAPS 15. Are you doing anything else? So that would be my other question. So um, I did find uh, back in February, I started, it is a group training facility. Um, and I know that it is, you know, especially now that I'm listening to you guys, I understand that it's probably a little more circuit style, uh, cardio heavy, but she does push strength and she pushes me to lift stronger. There's box work, there's, you know, free weights. So I'm, I'm trying to keep that as a sense of community, because like I said, I really, I have no one, I have a full gym in my garage. Mm. So I'm doing mass 15 advanced in my garage. How often are you so, doing, how often are you doing this group workout? Once a week, right? So um, I was doing three to four times a week, 5 a.m. Like, I, I really enjoy it. But at the same time, it's not, I know it's not giving me what I need compared to the strength training. Yeah. So I've, I've changed it to two to three, oh, maybe. How long, oh, how long have you been doing that for? Oh, Amanda. Just since February. Oh, we're going to fix you. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, pro you. the program. We are, we are going to fix that's you. That's the problem. The group, well, yes. that's not the problem, but that's a big problem. It is. That group class is definitely um, a throwing a wrench and everything. In, 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 you have to understand too, in the context of where we're at, right? Because yeah. I want to get this, because people think like, oh my God, how could they hate on Orange Theory? It's when I got a client who has been chronically low in calories, as long as you have been, that is like one of the worst places to go. It's just, we're not ready for that. Now, maybe when I get you up to eating 2,600 calories and you feel strong and you love that community, you love that class. Let me tell you, man, that's very possible. I can't you, even imagine that. I know. It sounds so crazy and so far away, right? But we did, is, we've done it so many times. It is very realistic, and the steps to get there look a little bit different than what we're doing right now. The MAPS 15, I love that. Absolutely love that. The fact that you added 200 calories, absolutely love that. But cardio classes right now, in the context of where we're at calorie-wise, is not supporting. And what it's probably doing is every time you probably add a couple pounds of muscle— your body pairs it down because of all that extra activity for how low of calorie you are. So that's part of why you're seeing the body fat percentage stay where it's at because you're not allowing the strength training to do what it needs to do, which is to keep packing you, muscle on your body. Because you were at such low calories for so long while simultaneously beating yourself up <clears> in the gym, <throat> your body is in a chronic um, panic mm -hmm. situation. It wants to conserve calories. It has learned and done a good job of learning how to be efficient with calories. Okay, so we can function on 1,200 calories and do these crazy workouts. We have a lot of damage control to do before we can move forward. So what that looks like is eliminating those intense workout classes, following MAPS 15. I don't care if you walk, you know, 
you know, 12,000 steps a day. I love that. Yeah, walk. Keep that up. I've got that in. Good. Don't do anything else. And then slowly, this is the damage control part, slowly move your calories up. We're going to reverse diet you slowly. And here's what we're looking for. Strength gains. Are you stronger with MAPS 15? Are you lifting more weight? Are you able to do more in your deadlift, your squat, your overhead press? If you're getting stronger while you're reverse dieting and the weight on the scale isn't moving a lot, now it's going to fluctuate. But if you're not jumping 10, 15 pounds, we're good. Slowly do that. And you can interrupt it every four or five weeks with a little short, low calorie, you know, three, four days of low calorie and then jump back up. But so do three, four days. Maybe. Yes. Every now and then. Yes. Like every three, four <laughs> weeks. But stay the course on the reverse diet until we get you up to a point where we could drop you back down and then see some fat loss. But we got to get you out of this like danger state for sure. Amanda, we're going to solve this. This is, and I love the program. <laughs> we are, we're going to solve this and you're going to absolutely, if you like us now, you're going to love us after this. Okay. So you're going to follow maps 15. Like you're doing, I want Doug to put you in our private forum. Okay. So now you I'm, have, I'm already there. Okay. You the are Facebook. Yes. <laughs> yes. So this is what I want yeah. you to do then every 30 days. I just want to get an update from you, how things are going. Okay. Just give us a, a, an update on been following Matt's 15. I cut out the the cardio classes. I'm just walking every day. Give us just kind of an update where we're at. And then we'll kind of guide you through that. Calories, what am I eating every single day? We'll, we'll guide you through this process. It is a slow process. Also, if you're not doing it already, follow the docu-series that I'm doing on YouTube because I talk a lot about this stuff. I don't know if you've seen that yet or not, but I started a docu-series on my journey of building my metabolism back up and then losing body fat. So uh, and I'm following MAPS 15, like that protocol. So watch that on and you. What's hard about MAPS 15 is I feel like because I'm so used to doing so much, hitting it hard. Yes, I know. I feel like this isn't enough. Yeah. You need no, to watch, no. you need to watch the docuseries. So <laughs> I talk, exactly the right okay. I talk all about this, the psychological game it's of really wanting to do more. I even, I even share when I make mistakes and I go, ah, damn it. I did too much. I, I wanted to do, and shame on me. I've been doing this long. Watch that. It's on Mind so, Pump TV on the YouTube channel and start to watch now, that series. Now, I'm going to set you up with the right expectations right now, okay? Uh, because of where you came from and how long you did that, you're, you're going to need to give yourself a minimum of three months of this process. So for three months at least, don't expect to lose any weight. Don't expect to get any leaner. We're just boosting your metabolism and getting stronger. So just give into that, okay? Now, the other option is to do what you were doing before, which also results in zero results. So what we're looking for is a faster metabolism. So for the next 90 days at least, minimum, I say minimum because it could take longer, we're going to start to reverse out and correct some of this damage. And hopefully at the end of 90 days, we got you closer to 1,800, 1,900, maybe 2,000 calories. And then from there, we can figure out what we want to do. For some people, it takes longer, but it's going to be at least a 90-day period. So already just give into that. So like, all right, for the next three months, I like I, that. I like I like having a time frame in goodness. mind, or or at least a goal. I goodness. don't really know what I'm working towards yeah. right now. Excellent. Don't worry. We're going to help you with all that. Now, and, in and that check in with us in that 90 day period. Just look at strength because your mind's going to play tricks on you. Everything. Oh my gosh, what's happening? I feel tight. My clothes feel tighter. I don't know. My weight went up a little bit, or maybe I should be doing more. I feel so you know energetic. Maybe I could go do a couple workout classes and just beat myself up a little bit. Don't succumb to it. 90 days and then check in with us and then we'll we'll know where to go from there. And you brought up something that the, the hardest thing for me to tell you to go away from the class is you said something that I think is important is that you found good community. Let us be your community, yeah. okay? Engage with <laughs> us on the forum. Follow my, uh, now that I've met you, okay, and I'll, I'll recognize your name. Now that I've engaged with me on the docuseries, I'm ta every single day I'm posting either on my Instagram or on the YouTube channel and I'm, I'm in there interacting with you guys. Follow that, engage with me. I'll be your community, okay? We will and we'll support you through this process. Hang in there. We have, we have a lot of positive things ahead of us. Awesome. Thank you so much. So when you say check in, do you mean like at, on the forum yeah. or how yeah, do you do yeah, that? Yeah, in the forum. In the forum, just every, thir us. every 30 days. Yeah, you tag our name, right? So just put at all of our personal names, right? And then okay. it, we'll see it for sure if you do that. And just let us, hey guys, just letting you know, this is where I'm at. Uh, weight's here. This is what I've done. I've got rid of the classes, blah, blah, blah. Just kind of give us an update. And also how you're okay. feeling. You know, psychologically, okay. let me know. Like, hey, I'm actually feeling really good. Energy moment. I know I'm not seeing a lot of movement yet, but you know what? I'm noticing strength go up. Or, man, I'm feeling discouraged. I just feel like I'm... St like, let us know. Let me know how you're feeling so I can step you through that process as we go through this. All right. Sounds good. I'll trust the process. Yes, good. All right, all right good. Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. We got Thank it. Thank you so much. You got it. You know, I had a client, I'll never forget, uh, I've, I've talked about her on the show before. She was running uh, something like 20-something miles a week. She was strength training every single day. A lot of it was circuit-based. 
She was also eating about 1,200 calories a day. And she, she's just like, my body won't budge. I, I'm stuck at, I don't remember what her body fat percentage was at the time, 28% or something like that. She's stuck. I don't know what to do. It, it took us a year, a yeah. full year. Now, at the end of that year, this is where we ended up, okay? She was doing about three days a week of strength training. She was doing none of the running or minimal. I think she ran a couple miles a week because she loved it. Um, her calories had gone from 1,200 to 2,200 calories. Her body fat percentage was 19%. And at the end of that year, she was like, uh, uh, this is insane. Yeah. Like, I, I can't believe how easy this is. And I was like, you were fighting your body so hard for so long. Thank you for trusting the process because you have to trust the process because yeah. there's that first three to six month period where you're just not going to see much. You're going to see some strength gains. You'll feel better, but the weights on the scale is going to change. Am I doing the right thing? Uh, maybe I should go back to beating myself up. And then maybe you do and you lose a couple pounds. Now you're emboldened to go back to do what you were doing Submitting before. to the process. That's it. one of the hardest things. 100%. It, it's so hard because I know that people hear us, you know, yeah. hammer these classes. And the, and listen, I, I I appreciate the community side. I know that's good. And it, this could be a place that I would be okay with her going to. At, at not right some, now. But not right now. Right now. Yeah. Not in the context of I'm eating 1,200 calories. You, she also said, did you hear notes? She's stepping 10 to 15,000 steps a day. Mm -hmm. That's a lot already of yeah. good, good movement. She's training in the gym every single day. And then she's doing these classes three times a week. It is just wait. You're, you are not going. And she just now started hitting her protein intake too, by the way. So she had to increase her calories just so she could get her protein intake. Yet she's doing all this activity. So the body is starving for new nutrients it's she's doing all these things to tell it to build muscle and the body's going uh-uh no. you're not giving she me she trained her body to work on very little and to mm -hmm. keep everything on and uh, body fat wise and to not build too much muscle to keep that metabolism slow yep. that's what she trained her body to do look if you love the show come find us on instagram justin is at mind pump justin i'm at mind pump to stefano and adam's at mind pump adam all right i know you like that episode if you did check this one out 30 percent body fat for men this is way too high this is actually a bit high for women as well so in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.